What's up? Okay. Happy New Year, all. So I get an Instagram message from a very good friend of mine named Dan Hodgson, who is in several bands. Uh, Graves of the Abyss, which is a sort of a black and death metal, black and roll sort of band. He's getting into a new project with a couple of his buddies over in PEI. But he's also one of my one of my favorite musicians um, out of the Maritimes, and I know he's probably watching us going, "Oh, oh, you don't be such a bird." But I fucking Danny's just a great dude. He's got a great beard, great bald head, and he also is in a band called Death Valley Driver. I've mentioned these guys probably a half dozen times or so, and. Um, there's nothing that they do that isn't a influenced by the man, band I'm about to talk about um, to do a ranking of. But Dan's Dan's an influence, and he doesn't know this, but he knows now. Um, just the way he attacks vocals is something else. So to give a simple description of how uh, da uh, down, Death Valley Driver sound. We are going to take, you basically take this band, put them in a wrestling match with this band, and you get Death Valley Driver. So if you like these guys and you like these guys, probably check them the fuck out. You can find them on Bandcamp. They're going to have the, they're going to have the more vocals along this line, but the riffs, like, holy fuck, is all... A lot of this and there's some motorhead stuff in there too because you know Danny's a big fan of these cats and so is the band okay moving on the band I'm going to talk about today is as per his request is entombed now I'm doing a ranking for entombed and entombed AD because I don't want to just do the nine entombs, entomb records. Because, well, fucking, why would I not include um, Algie Petrov, who we lost last year at the age of forty-nine, which really just kind of it, that sort of still fucking that sort of still hits me kind of hard because it's an it's LG number one and fucking um, he was only forty-nine. He's just like nine years older than I am, right? Nine, ten years older than I am, so. That being said, we're going to look at all of the Entomb stuff, like I say, the, the AD stuff included. And without further ado, since I'm already three minutes into this fucking video, let's start, shall we? Twelve studio albums. I'm not talking about EPs. I'm not talking about singles. I'm not talking about live. We know this. This is not how it works. We're going to start off with 1998's Same Difference. Now, he warned me about this record. And I'm not going to lie, because I only own one Entomb record. Obviously, I went to YouTube, and I went to Apple. I couldn't find all of the Entomb stuff on Apple, so I did have to go to YouTube for a few of them. And, I'll, and actually, same difference was one. Dan, you were not lying. I might have made it through 40 seconds of, like, four songs. And I was just like, no. No, I can't. I know that doesn't make sense for someone who's trying to review something, but if it's that bad, I'm not going to give it the fucking time because that's just, just that simple. I can't do it. Um, guys will be like, well, you can't touch. You're not even a real reviewer. Well, I just review on YouTube. That's not being a real reviewer, is it? Maybe it is. I'm not working for banger fucking TV, okay? Same difference, absolute fucking trash. Don't listen to it. Save yourself a lot of grief. I had to, unfortunately, deal with said grief. Thanks, Dan. You bastard. Now, I want to make this perfectly clear. It's fucking entombed. So, even the bad stuff is not as bad as other stuff that I've heard from other big bands. Um, number 11, we go to 2003's Inferno. 
The fucking album cover for that is garbage. So is Same Difference, so is Uprising, and so is Morningstar. Jesus Christ. Obviously, Danny Seagrave wasn't a part of that now, was he? And if he was, that's terrible. Um, the production on Inferno, and actually the next two records after this, the production's pretty decent, but there's... This is where they've, they're already deep into that death and roll sort of thing, that death metal sort of vocal with a lot of the rock and roll feel to it. Um, Inferno, though, is far more punk rock. than the, There's more of a punk rock feel that I'm, I'm hearing, um, which is not a bad thing, but I just <coughs> I just didn't find anything really sat with me. Um, there's a couple tracks that were pretty cool, but, I mean, you know, production and... And I guess too, it's being it's two thousand three, and their productions come really far from that that standpoint. Two uh, thousands uprising. Uh, I really did not like the album cover for that at all. That's fine. Um, more, more obviously, more the death and roll. The production again is okay. Vocally, LG just I don't know. It just to me doesn't sound as good as I have expected. Um, number nine so uprising is number 10 inferno is number 11 obviously um we have morning star from 2001 sitting at number nine slightly harder edge which i like uh production and the vocals were both far better on morning star although the album cover made no sense sure there's a reason but there's not a whole lot of info on why they picked these album covers so i don't know Moving on to number eight. Now, this is where things get really interesting. Number eight, um, it's very hard rock. Uh, th sorry, this came out in 2007. The death, the death and Roll is there, but there's a bit of new metal stuff in there on a couple tracks. Very hard rock. Um, there's also this sort of weird female vocal thing that they really should have shortened um, on, on the song Wedded Sodom. That was just something that really sat sort of in my head be like why would you do that why would you spend and all they do are they really just repeated the out the, the title just went and saw them but there was like this sort of like i said weird haunting sort of female thing and i don't know if that was like sort of a mistake and they left it in or if it was or something they wanted to have it just to me just sounded weird i don't know sort of that 2000s 2000 to 2007 was really sort of eh, i didn't get a whole lot to it now we get to the meat of things uh, 1997's six, and, and it's DCLXVI, which is 666, uh, to ride, shoot straight. Um, but this is at number seven. Why? And the album cover, or well, the, the, the cover I saw on YouTube, because that was the only way I could listen to it. It's very death and roll. Or the death and roll is like really thick here. I mean, thicker than normal. Um, I do favor them doing the more metal thing but i don't list i don't dislike them doing the the death and roll because this album was actually pretty good um production was actually fairly decent um and it seems like there was a fair amount of the same sort of uh lineup from my from my recollection um number six now we're going to start tapping in ad and some guys out there are probably going to go, wait, how is Entombed AD even in the remote, uh, even in the top six? Just wait, because I'm about to make your heads explode. Um, 2014's Back to the Front. Vocals are great. There's a bit of whispery type spots on here, a la Phil on Salmo, uh, on Bedlam Attack. The production is awesome. Back to the front is just actually a pretty is it's actually a pretty good record. You can actually tell that LG's vocal is starting to get back to sort of where it was because he kind of trailed off and he was doing sort of that sing, sing screamy kind of thing in the whole death and roll. And I mean, it doesn't have to be death metal vocals all the time. It could be whatever you want. But this is where I sort of get back to where uh lg was and i'm going to say basically the same thing on 2000 
two, yeah, 2016's uh, De uh, Dead Dawn, which is very, very similar to uh, Back to the Front, and that is at number five. Production on it is getting far better every time they do a record, and just honestly, I just, I, I, I like the sound of it. It's a good fucking sound. Number four, the beginning of Death and Roll with Wolverine Blues. Now, I will state for the record that I actually had a hard time listening to this when I first heard it many, many years ago. Because I had heard that, and that was the first actual bit of Entombed I actually heard. So, Wolverine Blues is coming in at number four. Now, there's probably going to be some guys going, how could you do that? That's, this is a travesty. I'm sorry, this is my fucking ranking. If you have anything to do better, go do it yourself. Dan probably be like, yeah, fuck, whatever. He's a contrarian of sorts. Um, I did like it, so it is in the top five. It's it took me as soon as I got listening, I was like, okay, here we go. Yeah, now we're now we're talking. Now we're talking that fucking rock and roll, fucking four, you know, four four beat. This sort of same killer riffs, bluesy killer riffs. It was great stuff. I actually really like it. Um, and this this to me is what I would classify as the beginning of death and roll. Now, with all these other records, too, you, there's another thing I'm going to get to, but a lot of you guys already know it. Um, it's that wonderful pedal. Now, number three, Bowels of the Earth. Holy fucking shit. This came out in 2019, and how, how no one ever told me about this is beyond me, or someone may have told me about it, but I never really paid attention because there was the other record that I'm going to get to here shortly. Uh, that was the one that stuck with me, like, the most. Um, but this Bowels of the Earth, Jesus Christ, I could have been an Entombed fan far earlier. Um, but, I mean, well, not far earlier, because it was, like, three years ago now. That's weird. Um, that just really harkens back to the early days. Um, LG's vocals are on point. Um, he's fucking killing it. He really has that sort of death growl, but you can hear what he's saying. Um, if you really put the, you know, put the headphones on, if you have, if they're noise canceling and you can flip that switch, I'm telling you, you're really going to like it. Production wise, it's fantastic. Guitars and that HM2 pedal, full buzz saw is just grinding like a son of a bitch. Um, if you're an Entomb fan and you are hesitant on the AD stuff, go listen to, uh, like I said, you can go to Back to the Front and Dead Dawn. You'll probably like them. But if you're really looking for that fucking buzzsaw, I'm going to kick you right in the face. Um, please check out Bowels of the Earth. That's my number three. And the song Torment Remains. Oh my fuck, that is amazing. Now, there's only two left. And I'm sure you know exactly what's coming where. But I still have to do it. Uh, Nick Anderson did the vocals for Clandestine. Now, if you ask the boys from Thralls of Metal, they'll tell you that is Cladenstein's or Cladenston or whatever that fucking Shred Lord goes on and on about. Um, fucking guy. <coughs> it's more of the whole, more of the buzzsaw. More uh, HM2. The vocals clearly are different. And you know what? Like, leading up to this, I was sort of at, like, now nah, I'm not listening to the Cladenstein. I don't like it because it's not LG. But I'm like, you know what? Because I have to do this. Because I have to do this ranking, and I have to do it semi-correct. There are some records on here I couldn't give a fuck about, like Same Difference or whatever. But Clad or Clandestine is fucking amazing. It's the it's it's literally the perfect record to follow up. Obviously, Left Hand Path. Nick did a great fucking job. The drums are driving. The drums are pounding. It's just. It's just a really good record. Unfortunately, doesn't have LG Petrov. That's why it's not number one. I'm a big LG fan. Um, I really like everything he's done, except for those, you know, same difference. Same difference. I, did, I actually thought that was a different singer and not LG. According to all the notes I've read is that he was on that record. And fuck, he sounds bad. And this is the thing with Entombed. Again, it's... Because you're literally, you know, you're literally going over one of the fucking biggest Swedish death metal bands from back in, you know, in the, in the 90s. And Clandestine was, Clan, Clandestine was a number one. Yeah, look, or not number one, uh, 1991. This is that, you know, that's a number two. 
the production is far fucking better than it was on some of these other records. Morningstar is okay, or well, it's it's better, but Uprising, Inferno, same difference. It just don't sound good, and they were in the fucking almost early to mid two thousands. Like why is clandestine, you know. You know, clandestine at number two in 1991, it was the, the mix. Why does that sound better than those ones? Probably the whole Sunlight Studio thing. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the number one. You all know this is the record. You all know that there's no other record that's going to beat this. Had I not been privy to this I could have put bowels of the earth at the in in number one but really there's not a whole I mean other than the production between this bowels and clandestine <laughs> shit man like these are the top three those are the these are the top three in tomb records Left hand path. When you get listening to it, it just kicks the fucking teeth down your throat. And then all of a sudden you hear the fucking theme from, uh, you know, Phantasm. You know, come on. You're like, oh, okay. Fucking soundtrack shit. And then it kicks back in. You've got Drowned. Revel in Flesh, which is amazing. When Life Has Ceased. Amazing. Supposed to Rot. Amazing. But Life Goes On. Bitter Loss. Morbid Development abnormally deceased and the truth beyond like this record is fucking amazing like look at the back cover this is a pretty brutal fucking album cover there's the four boys right there with the fucking big black cross in the background the dead of winter you know this was one of the reissues you know 1989 it was reissued and then they then they put a then they put it out in 2017 and I did a video on this when I when I went and bought it. Like this has been the grail, and it's mostly at the, at mostly because of the album cover. But the record itself is fucking ten out of ten. Like just look at that fucking artwork. Like if you know who Entombed is and you own this record, the fucking skulls, man. Look at all this shit. I mean, <coughs> I don't have to explain this. Here's the boys there. Look at LG looking all handsome and stuff. You know? You know, just some of the best shit. Um, you know? Also, a big thank you to our musical influences. Repulsion, Slayer, Ravage, Deathstrike, Autopsy, Christopher Young, and Vomit. Sunlight Studios. Yeah. That HM2, the Boss HM2, Heavy Metal, Pedal Number 2. All the knobs cranked way full. I think there was another, might have been another distortion pedal in there, but I think it, that was the main one. Sunlight Studios, man, just fucking full on, you know, and produced by Thomas Scogsberg and Entombed, engineered by Thomas, recorded, mixed at Sunlight Studios, Stockholm, December 1989, released in 19, 1990. Cover art by Dan Seagrave and photos by Mick Lundstrom. Mick did that. Danny Seagrave did that. I mean, if you know Entombed and you're a fan, <laughs> you know that's number one. There's no chance any other records... I mean, as I said, had LG did Clandestine, might have got numbered one, but even Bowels of earth like if like with my notes here i have 
You know, number four, like I said, was Wolverine Blues, Great, De great Death and Roll. So number three, Bowels of the Earth. Fuck. Because it sounds almost as, almost as good as that left-hand path from bed. <laughs> <coughs> Sorry about that. Uh, I was uh, swallowing air. Wrong hole. I'm just going like, to... Like, this is... This is the kind of record that you want to take out and just look at it. I know I've, I know you've spent enough time and I haven't already talked about it. I listed off the songs. But do you actually have to say how good it is? No, because you already know. If you've heard it, you already know. So yeah. Anywho. That's it for that. If you agree, great. If you don't, leave me a comment. Leave me, leave you, leave me your thought processes in here. And I believe Thralls of Metal are actually supposed to either record it to record their ranking today, or they're supposed to record and release it today. Maybe it'll be edited, and maybe it won't be out for a couple days. But that's cool. Anyways, thank you very much for watching, guys. You've been awesome. Keep that shit as heavy as possible, and I'll see you later.